Hi everybody! Happy Sunday! Can you believe it's the first Sunday in October? I sure can't! Before we get started, here is a quick announcement. I just wanted to remind all of you that on Sundays, we meet together on Zoom. I love that you can watch this video right here on YouTube, but if you ever want to hang out with me and with a bunch of our other friends, please consider joining us at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Zoom. Please email westchildren at redeemer.com with any questions or if you would like more information. Now, we've got to get going because you guys, I'm just so excited about today. So let me ask you our question of the day today. Our question of the day today is, do you think it's hard to help people that you don't like? Hmm. So if you ever met somebody and you've thought, you know what? That person is not really my friend. Maybe I'll get to know them better. Maybe I'll like them someday, but they weren't very nice to me. Maybe you've met somebody like that. Is it easy or is it hard to be nice to that person? I think we're going to learn about that in our story today. But before we get to our story, we have to change our green screen. Drum roll, please. I kind of like this one. It's just kind of fun, don't you think? All right, why don't we fold our hands and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so, so much for this day. Thank you that you've brought us together to learn your word. And just when we think about our question of the day about being nice to people that we don't really like, Lord, help us to remember that you love everyone. You made everyone, you know everyone, and it is your wish that we would all come to know you. So Jesus, help us to get to know you better and better. Help us to live our lives for you, because of you. Help us to repent and ask for forgiveness for our sins. And help us to always remember that you are our Savior and our King. And you are with us no matter what. We love you, Jesus. Please help us to love you more and more. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Great job, you guys. Okay, now we have done our announcements and our green screen and our question of the day and our prayer. We've missed a cat, but the cats are asleep. So if I can get them later, I promise I will get them later. Let's review our scripture memory verse. This is our third week of this scripture. It's Ephesians 4, 32. Let's read it together and then we will review our motions. Be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Great job, everybody. Now let's review our sign language. If this is your first week with us, each week we review a scripture memory verse so that we can remember it and we put motions with it. A lot of our motions come from sign language and some of our motions don't. Let's review our motions together. The first motion we have is for the word kind, where we draw a little circle by our heart. Be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, you tap your heart and then open and close your hands twice. So, be kind to one another. Tender-hearted. Forgiving one another. Remember, we brush our hand twice, kind of like how Jesus washes away our sin. We brush our hands twice. Forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32. This verse teaches us that God wants us to be kind and to have a tender heart. A tender heart is a heart that loves God and loves others, right? Jesus wants us to be kind and tender hearted. He wants us to forgive one another. Because why? Because God has forgiven us. Because of Jesus, right? You remember Christ, Jesus, that's the same sign. So let's do this verse one more time till next week. You guys probably know it so well by now. Ready, set, go. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32. Round of applause. That was so, so good. I'm very, very impressed. Now, without further ado, we need to jump into our lesson. The last two weeks, we have been learning different parables 
that Jesus taught. A parable is a special story that has a deep meaning about God and the kingdom of heaven. The parables that Jesus told are so important. And I have to tell you, I am so excited, you guys, because today and next week, we are learning my two favorite parables. I love all of them so much. But this week and next week are especially special to me. Maybe by the end of all of our parables, you'll be able to pick which parables you like the best. So, without further ado, let's jump in. Our parable today takes place in the book of Luke chapter 10. If you have your Bibles and you want to flip to Luke chapter 10, you can do that. Remember, we go to the table of contents, we find the book of Luke, and then we find the big 10. And you can also look for the little 25 because this parable starts in Luke 10, 25. If you look in your Bible at Luke chapter 10, verse 25, the first thing I see in my Bible is the parable of the Good Samaritan. We know the word parable. We just talked about what that means. We know what good means. And then there's the word Samaritan. Freeze. Now, before we keep going, I just want us to, to, to scratch our brains and see if we can remember where we've heard the word Samaritan before. <gasps> Do you remember a few weeks ago, we learned about Jesus speaking to a woman at the well where there was water? Do you remember that story? We talked about how that woman lived in Samaria. Do you remember if the Samaritan people liked the Jewish people? No, they didn't. The Jewish people said, I don't like Samaritans. And the Samaritan people said, I don't like the Jews. They were not friends with each other. So right away, as we look at the very beginning of this parable, when it says the parable of the good Samaritan, we can remember that a Samaritan person would not be somebody that the Jewish people liked very much. Let's keep that in the back of our minds while we learn our story. Now, if you look in verse 25, it says, And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Okay, so you guys might know this because the same thing is true now that it was back then. Some people have jobs called lawyers, and lawyers are very smart. They learn the law. And so back in Bible times, the lawyers knew a lot about God's law. But this lawyer came to put Jesus to the test. That meant that he wanted to see how smart Jesus was. What do we know about Jesus? He is the smartest. Nobody's smarter than Jesus. So this lawyer coming to put Jesus to the test, we don't need to put Jesus to the test. We know that Jesus knows everything. Anyway, this lawyer said, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Inherit is a big word. Eternal life is a big word. The other way to say this is, what should I do to spend forever and ever with God. What should I do? So we want that, right? We want to spend forever with God. So let's see what Jesus said. If you look in verse 26, Jesus, he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? So whenever we see this a lot in the Bible, whenever anybody came to put Jesus to the test, Jesus normally responded to them with a question to see what they would say. And so Jesus asked the lawyer who knew about the law. He said, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And so Jesus was saying to that lawyer, you should know the answer. You know God's law. Verse 27 says, and he, the lawyer, answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. So this verse was from all the way back in Deuteronomy. This was a law that God had given Moses thousands of years beforehand. And so 
This is a very important scripture in the Bible that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and that you should love your neighbor as yourself, right? Those were commandments that God gave. So the lawyer was quoting the Old Testament and Jesus said to him, this is verse 28, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. So Jesus was saying, you're right. You need to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And you need to love your neighbor as yourself. In verse 29, it says, But he, the lawyer, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And so when you read those words, to justify himself, it was like the lawyer, he wasn't asking earnestly or sincerely. He wasn't saying, but Jesus, who is my neighbor? Teach me about my neighbor. The lawyer just kind of wanted to be right. And he wanted to hear what Jesus would say about who is a neighbor and who's not a neighbor. So the lawyer didn't have a very kind heart. He was kind of just trying to be right. And being right all the time, that's not the most important thing. Let's see what Jesus said to answer his question, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. So Jesus is telling the parable now and the parable starts with a traveler, a man, who gets really hurt. Let's see what happens next. This is verse 31. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. Ooh, I bet the priest helps the man. A priest is like a pastor or a reverend, like a teacher who teaches about God. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Oh dear. The priest didn't stop to help the man who was hurt. Let's see what happens next. So likewise, a Levite, oh pause, I have to tell you what a Levite is. A Levite was a Jewish person who knew God's law really, really well. Back in the Old Testament, there were 12 tribes of, of, uh, of Israelites. And one of the tribes was called the Levites and they worked in the temple and they knew God's law. Let's see what happens with the Levite. I bet he will help the injured man. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him and passed by on the other side. So the priest and the Levite didn't help the injured man. This parable is challenging. Let's keep reading. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. Uh-oh, now a Samaritan is here? Remember, the Samaritans didn't like the Jewish people. I bet he passed by too. Let's see what it says. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Do you guys know what compassion means? Compassion is a lot like kindness. Compassion is when you want to help because of a loving heart. So the Samaritan had compassion for the Jewish man who was so injured and hurt. Let's see what the next verse says. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he set him on his own animal and brought him to the inn and took care of him. The Samaritan helped. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting and wonderful. This injured man who was probably so sad and, and had tons of boo-boos and who had had people pass by him, finally had someone who helped him and it was a Samaritan person. Let's keep reading, we're almost at the end. 
And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper saying, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. So the Samaritan offered to keep taking care of the man until he got better. Then Jesus asked a question. He said, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. So Jesus said to the lawyer of those three men, the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan, which one acted most like a neighbor? to the Israelite who was wounded, to the Jewish person who was wounded. And the lawyer kind of got it. He understood. He said, whoa, the one who showed him mercy, the one who showed him compassion, the Samaritan. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. So Jesus is teaching us in this parable that everybody is our neighbor. The people who are like us and the people who are not like us, the people we like and the people maybe we think we don't like. But see, here's the thing. This is the second story that we've heard in the last month that has to do with a Jewish person and a Samaritan person. Two people who in the Bible did not get along. And Jesus is showing us that God wants us to get along and love and take care of people who maybe we aren't supposed to like. According to Jesus, there is no one that we're not supposed to like. Because God loves everyone, we are supposed to love everyone. Jesus wants us to treat each other the way God treats us with compassion and kindness and mercy and love, right? God doesn't look at some people and say, I don't love you, I just love these people. No, God loves everyone. And when Jesus told this story of the Good Samaritan, he was trying to teach the people that everybody is everybody's neighbor. Everybody is your neighbor. Everybody is my neighbor. And I shouldn't look at somebody and think, I don't like them. No, that is not how Jesus wants me to behave. Now, Jesus told this parable so that the lawyer would realize that he should have compassion and he should have mercy, right? We know that those commandments at the beginning that Jesus uh, asked, he asked the lawyer, what does the law say? And the lawyer said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind, right? We need to read the Bible every day. We need to pray every day. We need to ask God to make our heart more like him, more like Jesus, right? And in doing that, as God changes our heart, we will be able to love our neighbor as ourself and we will be able to see that everybody is our neighbor and that we need to show the whole world the love of Jesus. That's what Jesus wants us to do. He doesn't want us to say, I'm right and you're wrong. He wants us to say, Jesus is our savior and Jesus loves us and without him, we're all wrong. We all need Jesus love and Jesus, ugh, he loves us so much that he died on the cross for our sins and he rose again so that we can have eternal life. Remember that initial question that the lawyer asked? He said, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? We can't do anything to inherit eternal life. Jesus gives us the free gift of eternal life by dying on the cross for our sins and rising again. What we have to do is trust and believe in him and know that he is our savior and know that he has forgiven us, right? Jesus has forgiven our sin, yeah? And he loves us more than we'll ever know. 
And because he loves us, we can love everybody in the whole wide world. And I think that is amazing. And so that's why this parable is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite parables. Next week, we're even going to learn my more favorite parable. I'm so excited. But for today, I'm so happy we learned this one because we need to remember this right now. As we're going to school, as we're on Zoom, as we're with our families, because of Jesus, we can love the people in our lives with the love of Jesus. I am so thankful that we got to learn this today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the parable of the Good Samaritan. Thank you that this parable teaches us how you want us to love. God, in this parable, you are like the Good Samaritan. You came and you rescued the person that had been so broken and hurt by the robbers, right? And so God, we praise you and we thank you that when you came to earth, you were wounded and crushed for our sin. You took the punishment that we could never take. Jesus, thank you for rescuing us from sin and death. And thank you for teaching us how to treat people. Jesus, you are the one who shows us how to love. Help us to love the world like you do. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for rising again and giving us eternal life, which is just so, so, so exciting. Jesus, we could never say thank you enough. We love you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Great job, everybody. Oh, I'm so, so happy we got to be together today. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.